With the vast last video, we left off with the proclamation of 1763. As we talked about, the British were in serious debt, and they needed to raise money, and they needed to raise money quickly. They therefore turned to their greatest asset, their greatest colony, which of course, the greatest colony or series of colonies, the Americas. They turned to the 13 colonies in North America. Now, there had been a tax on molasses, which is sort of a sweet-ish, syrupy substance. Your parents might have one in the house, have a jar of it in the house. It is not something that you really want to just chug into your coffee. It's related to sugar, but it's really kind of nasty. Anyways, there had been a tax on molasses for 30 years. But the colonists had gotten around it because to pay the tax, they had to buy the molasses from Great Britain. So instead, they disobeyed Britain's orders and they purchased molasses from other countries for cheaper. They were kind of thumbing their noses at the British tax. But in 1764, Britain decided to try to get the colonists to pay the tax by cutting the overall rates to make it cheaper for the colonists to buy molasses. They looked at it and they said, wow, this is a win-win. The ordinary American somewhere in the middle of the frontier is going to get cheaper molasses and the and the British are going to get more money because they will get more, collect more taxes. This is going to be a win-win, right? Hot dog. We get more, they get more. Win-win, bada-bing, bada-boom, right? Wrong. This seriously damaged the profits of the merchants living in a lot of the port cities along the coast. They had been making money by buying and trading, buying and selling molasses, among other things. And so this tax would literally put many of them out of business. And they began to protest, and they began to boycott this molasses. And by doing so, shortly thereafter, the act was repealed. So the Sugar Act of 1764 came and went. It sparked rage in the colonists, got them protesting, got them upset, and it ultimately failed. Now, Great Britain was not going to give up without a fight. They decided then to say, well, we need to tax the colonists. Heck, we were, the, we're in debt because we helped them out with the French Indian War. They started the war. We bailed them out. They should have to pay. So they turned around with a new tax. This tax would tax the colonists directly. And this tax was a tax on all legal documents. And it, what it was, was they had to make sure anytime there's a legal document, they had to pay to get it legally sanctioned. And the legal sanction would be, get, would be demonstrated by a stamp. And hence, this tax became known as the Stamp Act, which was passed in 1765. This included checks, mortgages, contracts, newspapers, and get this, even playing cards. Talk about Uncle Sam invading every inch of your personal life. Because this act, I know I said that because the act was packed, it was known as the Stamp Act. This enraged the colonists, as you can imagine. Because every sort of legal transaction just went up in price. So the colonists were now even more up in arms than they had been with the Sugar Act. And... <clears throat> There was a subversive group, a very hostile group towards this tax that became known as the Sons of Liberty, which included the likes of Samuel Adams, a real cantankerous anti-power person. Um, not technically related to the homebrew that has become popular in the last 30 years. Part of the, the actions of this subversive group as they would, um, to, to show their displeasure with tax collectors at having to collect taxes and pay them, some people might show displeasure by saying mean things to someone. They might show displeasure by making a model of them, you know, paper mache of someone and burning it in the public square, saying, ha ha, this is you, we're burning you alive, ha ha ha. They, they did all those things, but they did another thing, which was they would go to the tax collector's houses uh, they would take the tax collectors by an angry mob of people. They would take them out of their house. They would drag them over to a public place. 
in front of a whole crowd of people, and they would take hot tar and pour it over their bodies. And this, of course, would scald them, would scar them, uh, and then, of course, they would find feathers lying around, and they'd roll them around in feathers to make them look like a chicken. So this was, of course, known as tarring and feathery, feather, tar and feathering. They did this to Massachusetts tax collector Andrew Oliver. For some strange reason, he resigned and quit his job the next day. For another strange reason, England had a hard time finding someone to take the job of tax collector. I can't imagine why. Anyways, so as you can imagine, the British gave up on this. They said, all right, fine, you people, you're all crazy wackos. We're not going to do this to you. They relented, and because they relented again, the colonists felt even more empowered. They felt more empowered to say, we could take on the power. We could take on Great Britain. So the Sugar Act had been passed and failed. The Stamp Act had been passed and failed. But the British, once again, were not going to give up. And they passed the Townsend Act in 1767. This time, they decided not to tax things inside the colonies. You know, molasses as it went around or the legal documents within the colonies. They wanted to, to, to tax and import the tax imports as they came to the ports as they were getting off the boats tax them directly right there right in the border right as things were getting off the boat they taxed glass paper lead and portentously tea once again the colonists were enraged because if you notice all these all these People who are protesting, they're all the merchants. They're all the people who work and live right on the port cities, who make their money buying and selling things as they get off the boat. These people, and of course these people were the wealthy people. And the last thing you want is a whole bunch of wealthy people mad at you because wealthy people find a way of uniting and getting even. So, the colonists once again united for a boycott. And... For some strange reason, I'm not sure why, the British felt that the colonists were unmanageable. I don't know why. Anyways, so because they found the colonists unmanageable, they sent two regiments of troops to Boston to keep them under control. Nothing like sending a military crackdown to say, we are running the show, you will obey our authority. Well... There's nothing that really gets people angry like sending military troops to their backyard. So, the colonists and the British were getting more and more at loggerheads, more and more enraged at each other. And in fact, at one point, on uh, March 5th, 1770, a group of angry colonists were standing in a town square. And they were, of course, young men. They were bored. They were full of rage. And they decided to irritate the British soldiers. And how would they irritate them? They would throw stones, snowballs, oyster shells, and in fact, pieces of wood at the British soldiers. I would imagine that the snowballs might not be too painful, but I imagine the stones and the wood would be rather unpleasant to be hit with. The soldiers did not find this amusing and told them repeatedly to stop. The colonists, of course, did not. Then the soldiers fired back at the colonists and eventually killed five Bostonians. Now, the Sons of Liberty then took this incident and said, Wow, look at how evil they are. These evil, evil, evil people. Paul Revere even made a painting of it. Look at these horrible, wretched, evil people. And it became known as the Boston Massacre. Now, even though the Boston Massacre came and went, people were up in arms about it, it you know, it was in the newspapers, people talked about it, but it abated. And it demonstrated that the colonists, the British and the colonists, got to a point where they basically hated each other. And soon, Great Britain had a great idea. They had a brilliant idea to smooth things over. They would let the East India Company, the most powerful company in the world, a company that ruled India, ruled another country, basically, uh, they would let them 
make money by selling tea to the colonists. And for this, they wouldn't have to pay any taxes at all. And the colonists could get really, really cheap tea. Sounds great, right? <laughs> cheap tea? <laughs> Wrong. Because once again, the merchants are enraged. The merchants, this is getting, cutting away at their business. And the tea merchants who made money from buying and selling tea at uh, the, the port cities, they would be completely run out of business. So they came up with an idea. The Boston merchants said, hey, let's all dress up. Let's get together one night. Let's dress up like Native Americans. We'll make a bunch of noise. We'll attack the boat. And we'll dump all the tea into the Boston Harbor. Which is exactly what they did on December 16th. 1773. This event became known, of course, as the Boston Tea Party. This resulted in a huge loss of money for the British Crown because they saw all their tea dumped into the water. Uh, and so, as you can imagine, the British were upset. They were enraged. The British were not going to take this anymore from these colonists whom they had bailed out and who were refusing to pay the debts that Britain occurred by protecting them in the French-Indian War. So what were the British going to do to show the colonists they were in charge? That is what we will figure out on the next, next video. I wish you a good afternoon, and I will see you tomorrow, unless this is the weekend, and I will see you on Monday.